we got a 12 valve Cummins square body that I built three years ago. I don't think she shifted quite right. And I watched the mouse run right up through there. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Wish there was a bunch. Oh, oh my God. They refer to this one as the D30. Basically, it's the military M1. They refer to this one as the D30. Basically, it's the military M1008. Comes with the Dana 60, corporate 14 volt, 456 gears, lockers. 1997. 12 valve Cummins, um, for the most part it's all stock I believe, intercooled, it's got a 47 RE automatic in it, um, it's semi built, uh, we got Muldoon's full manual valve body that I pulled the valve body out and drilled it all out and did all that myself. We also gutted the whole truck front to back on the harness and updated it with a new painless Wiring harness, which we still, that's kind of the last 20% of this build, is finishing up wiring. It, it kind of moves around the property, but there's a lot of things like the taillights that don't work. The fans need hooked up to relays. This has got a lock-up torque converter, so we have to get the switches operating on the full manual valve body because I have to shift this manually, um, even though it's an automatic. There is no just putting it in drive and having it start in first gear shift automatically. I have to do that for this now. Other than that, 6 inch lift, 37 inch tires. I did 4 inch exhaust all the way out the back on this. Uh, we got a gooseneck hitch for it. We got to get mounted. At the time, I welded in some rockers. Still need to do cab corners there. The bottom of the door needs some help. Actually, the whole door could probably be replaced. Um, we did all new fender wells. Gosh, what else did I do to this thing? So here you can kind of see basically some of the things that needs to be done. A lot of the wiring's all ran throughout the truck, but it's not in wire loom because they don't come that way. Um, you have to kind of cut and lengthen the wires yourself. Um, as you can kind of see, I got it hanging down there we need to get all that figured out i never could get the taillights working properly um, and i believe that could potentially be the grounds i think if you don't have a good ground on all four corners that can mess with the lights and i think that's the problem but i'm not sure oh it's also got an np205 transfer case in it as well so with that being said let's get into making this thing roadworthy so the absolute first thing we need to address is this thing doesn't have any coolant in the engine. Um, there's a plate. It's very difficult. Actually, it might be in the truck. Probably should start with cleaning this thing out and figuring out what we got here. Because, like I said, it's been a hot minute. Oh, it's on the other side. So, the back story on this truck is one of my high school buddies bought it. And back when we were in college and I and and him and I lived close to each other so we kept it at my place he wanted to build the truck we drove to Mankato Minnesota to buy it bought the 12 valve the transmission everything all separate built the truck used summit racing uh, motor mounts so it bolted pretty much right in life got in the way and that just always happens with this type of stuff so I graduated the shop got crazy busy uh, he graduated, he went off um, doing his own things. So now at this point, we're a few hours away from each other. Um, and the truck has kind of sat ever since. It was hard because I don't run an automotive shop to work on stuff during the days. Um, we, and we had to keep up with powder coating and whatnot. And, you know, in my free time, I'm either spending my time with my kids or... The, the little time that I get to work on my own personal projects to help keep my sanity and and whatnot. Um, so this truck's just, it's been on the back burner forever. Which he's starting a new business now and he would like some extra funds to help with apparel and merch and all that stuff that goes into starting a small business. 
So he decided to sell the truck, um, and I th I've thought on it for, you know, I've told some people about the truck to get it sold, but it was just one of those things where we had a lot of money into this truck. I mean, we bought the best of the best when we were putting this in. We powder coated everything, put all new gaskets on the motor. Like, we did it right, and the interior was pretty much all redone, upgraded stereo systems. We did... Dynamat on the whole floor, the cab, the doors, everything. I mean, it's dead silent in there. Super nice. Um, so we just we had so much wrapped up into it, and in order to sell it when it's not really road worthy, but a lot of money like this, it's it makes it difficult. And I thought about it, thought about it, and turns out it's just one of those things. It's the first truck that I kind of you know helped build from the ground up. And it, like I said, it's every Chevy enthusiast dream to have a come and swap square body. So I decide to buy it um, to kind of keep it around. I, you know, I plan on getting this thing roadworthy. Now it's like, okay, it's mine. I feel like I kind of have ambition now to finish it. Wiring is just one of those things. It's, it's, I can do it. It's easy to do, but. Man, to spend weeks on doing it. I mean, putting in wire loom, cutting the wires, soldering the wires. I mean, we did this thing right, how it should be. And usually that's not the case with me, you know. <laughs> I'm usually trying to get something, you know, on the road or try to make a quick fix here or there. But this is the one that, you know, we put a lot of time into this thing over the years. And so I just, it was very hard for me to let this one go, actually. And... I think, you know, after at the end, if it is all running and driving great, you know, depending on what I have to put into it. You got the hounds playing around me. So anyways, enough talking. Let's go ahead, get to wrenching. There you are. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, this old most uh, rare part for a 12 valve <laughs> because they're hard to get. And I don't think anybody makes them. And these were prone to cracking. And the reason I know that is because we cracked the first one by over tightening the bolts on the block. So this essentially has a gasket that goes right here for your lower radiator hose and a coolant hose. And that seals it up. Well, for whatever reason, it didn't seal up, point cracked, replaced it again. Somehow it had like two gaskets in it and it would never seal. So that was kind of the current state. So we got a new gasket in now, the correct one. And I'm thinking we'll clean this gasket surface up and get this bolted on so we can get some coolant in this thing and get this motor up to temp. Basically there's an indent in the side of the block that, that gasket goes in and that plate mounts right to it. So we'll get that bolted in, get the lines hooked back up and we'll be set. Now I gotta try and get the lower radiator hose on which is not fun. Never mind. Okay, that that never happens. It went right on. <laughs> Go ahead and tighten up our hose clamps here. Just got to run this bolt through on the bottom side. Tighten up the alternator. And then get the belt on. Which is as simple as just moving the tensioner. that all my project trucks are so damn tall in the air it makes it pain in the ass kind of to work on these all right belts on i want to go ahead and get some coolant in this thing and let's hope that seal doesn't leak that i just fixed also need to figure out a temperature and oil pressure gauge. We haven't done any of that either. Also, to make these things just run top notch, you gotta clean them. You know, you ain't gonna want to run right, you know, if it's got a dirty motor. Hell. <laughs> we powder coated almost everything on this. It looks all brown right now just because it's been sitting for years, but we're about to change that. I power coded this back in the garage days, I believe.
never be easy. <laughs> I guess we didn't replace that hose. Well, we better get that hose replaced as soon as that system start building pressure. She's gonna be spraying out like crazy. All right, we got trans fluid topped off. Let's uh, take her down the road. I still don't have the fans hooked up, but it's 30 degrees out, it's a diesel. It's not gonna get that warm. Uh, all right, we got reverse. Oh, she went right in. She definitely liked fluid in there. All right. I don't think we're in first. I don't think she's shifted quite right. All right, there's first. It's like you gotta start in second or something. Nice shift. All right, so forever up, back, second. And then typically you'd want to lock it up now, but Put her back in first and turn back in the driveway here. Oh, we got the dog coming. Oh, big bump. Went ahead, back the truck in the garage. Barely fits. It's like 84 inches to the top of the door, and the truck is like 83 and. 15, 16. I'd say next on the list is we got to wire up the fans and we have to wire up the overdrive and lockup switch for the transmission. But you can kind of see the toggle switches there on the shifter. Need to figure out which color's which and then determine if we want overdrive on the bottom or top and then splice them into our transmission. Can you actually believe it? I have a spare 12 valve too. I believe this one was a 96. P pump, so it's a good one. That's what I'm working with for space in the garage here. <laughs> Crawl under here and see what we got. See, we got a transmission leak already. That's leaking on the transfer case. She's got a she's got a pretty steady drip where the transfer case mounts to the transmission. Imagine that. This thing is a heavy son of a gun too. So it's really tough. But right there, it almost looks like weld. And that's where I think the tail shaft of the trans broke. So I'm going to assume that it's leaking there. Um, what we're gonna do, spray her down with some of that magical stuff and throw some gasket maker up there to seal it up just a little bit better for now. A little leak's fine, but she's leaving a pretty good puddle on the ground here. So we wanna try and stop that a little bit more. I'm gonna assume that that you know we tried we tried to have it welded as good as we possibly could but it was a very difficult spot to get weld up in there and we didn't want to take the whole trans apart at the time so that will definitely have to be addressed in the future but for now we'll make her work well there you have it cleaned her off with brake fluid spread gasket maker all over the crack well the weld that we had over the crack so hopefully that sets up overnight, seals that up fine, and we should be good to go. There, a better view. And a trans cooler. So we gotta get all these lines freaking tied up away from the drive shaft. Looks like I got a bed bolt that backed out over there, never got tightened. You can see we pour 15 the whole frame. No rust under here really. Had uh, custom drive shafts made from fast shafts for front and rear. Four inch exhaust, MP205, there's the 47RE. Um, and right up there, is our wires coming out, which it looks like they're hooked up. I'm, I might have done that already. I have no idea. All right, so I did get them hooked up so we got red going to overdrive and blue going to lock up looks like i got one red one marked here to ignition that i never hooked up it's amazing we painted everything under here and it's sat and it's already 
that grimy. <laughs> 12 valve problems. I wait till the very end to put it in the wire one because you never know if you might get one mixed up. We got this all finished up going in the transmission so we should have overdrive, torque converter lockup, and positive 12 volts. Um, while I'm down here, I'm also nut checking everything, which I did find the transmission line was a little loose there. So just important, especially when a project's been sitting for years and you just don't remember where you left off. Um, you know, just just uh, you know, give everything give everything a good good wiggle, move around. You know, I got random speedometer cables hanging down, and you know, random plugs everywhere that could potentially get tied into a drive shaft so you know cut those off get rid of them if you for something like this i don't need any of that by the way this light absolutely amazing i'll go ahead and link it in the description below super cheap it's like 24 dollars for three of these um with three individual chargers for each one there's uh, like three different modes you got bright light and then it's got like a little spotlight, bright and light as well. Awesome light. I keep two of them at the shop, keep one here in the garage with me. And it's very, very handy. So I was sitting in here working with some wires and trying to vacuum up the seat with everything sitting on it. And I watched a mouse run right up through there. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Wish there was a bunch. Oh, oh my God. He's <laughs> Holy smoke! Oh, dog just about scared the hell out of me. <laughs> well, after that excitement, I think I'm gonna unbolt the seat. I did find a giant mouse nest still hiding. Oh, you gotta be kidding me! Uh, I just saw a third. Oh man! Well, this is gonna be a long night of hunting mice, I guess. I can't believe there's three of them. I'm gonna get this seat unbolted. We gotta get this out of here because there's clearly a nest underneath of it. So while we're waiting on hunting mice, I wanna go ahead and get the electric fan put in the radiator. Good, good. Let's go put this in the truck. So I got this fan in position. I almost want to buy like two more sets of these fan mounts because like I said, there's no room in here. And if I ever got to get that belt off or put a new one on, 100% that fan's going to have to be moved because our tensioner down there, there's going to be absolutely no way to get a ratchet in there. Um, and so unfortunately the only way would be to remove the fan. And you gotta be extremely careful with these, especially if you're installing them in the cold, kind of like I am. You don't want to just crank these things down crazy tight. Um, you can actually snap these off fairly easy. They're not the, definitely not the best method out there, but they are the cheapest method and the quickest method. Let's finish that up and keep moving on. All right, you ever been around something for just a little bit too long and you don't know how bad it was? That was the case last night. I was completely delusional on how bad this actually smells in here and after getting a night's rest and coming back here and opening the door to find a fourth mouse and I'm just like blasted with the awful smell of mouse piss. Like it is got mouse poop everywhere. I'm gonna uh, start getting this bench seat out. All right, we got the bench seat loose and I just pulled it up. The mouse nest was sitting right there. Haven't seen any anymore. We had that fourth one this morning. There's a mouse nest sitting right there. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna vacuum everything up we got here and well i gotta admit after uh kind of letting this thing air out for a hot minute and putting you know of course the the new car scent air freshener in here it 
It's probably like 70% nice clean soap air freshener and then like 30 very very fine hint of mouse pee still. So I think what I'm gonna do since the carpet's still since the carpet's kind of dry right now. So I'm gonna finish up the wiring over there. And then tonight I'm gonna completely soak down this whole carpet again and let it sit overnight and then I'll come back tomorrow and clean this one last time and hopefully we can get all the smell out of it. All right, it's been about two days of wiring on this thing. We finally got the fans working, all the relays hooked up to a switch on the inside that goes off the key. We got the radio wired up, the subs, amplifier, all that is functional again. Sounds kind of terrible to be honest. Got two six by nines in the back in boxes with a, I think a 10 inch sub, but I don't have any front speakers. And I think because of that, it just, it sounds really terrible. I finally figured out the taillights on this thing. I ended up having to run an additional ground wire from here all the way to like somewhere in here on the frame and grind the frame down to bare metal and put those on. As soon as I did that, everything started working perfectly fine as far as running lights go on both sides for all four bulbs. I'm still not getting any brake lights and I'm wondering if there's some issue with the brake switch on your pedal, which it's tough to see, but basically you push your pedal down, it releases a switch and your brake lights come on, brake pedal comes back, switch compresses, lights turn off. So we got to tinker with that a little bit, um, but it's just nice we actually have running lights and turn signals for both sides now. So that was a big step right there. We're going to move on to interior now. I had this dash blown apart because, um, you know, we we're doing all the wiring. So I want to get this all put back together. And just like that, we have our dash. Um, since we call this truck the Reaper, you know, it would be kind of cool to make like a custom plate up there with the badge that says that as well. Um, we got our trans temp gauge and our boost gauge. Eventually I'll probably put like an EGT gauge in that one. Uh, I'm not fond of that location um, for the gauges, but it's just a stick on deal. I don't have it mounted yet, but I'm trying to figure out where I should put that. That might be on a later video when we go to, to finish this interior. For now, let's go ahead Get this bench seat put back in this and roll her out of the garage finally. A lot of wiring done on this thing. I've literally spent every night for a solid week and a half just wiring this. <laughs> it's and if it honestly if it wasn't for those taillights giving me so much fuss um, by not grounding through that poor 15. Oh that reminds me. The bed bolts, they are not tight. I gotta knock those out and then we'll slot the bench seat back in. Oh, do need to clean the inside of the windows too. You know, we gotta make sure we eliminate all the mice pee smell. <laughs> so I just took the seat cover off of this thing because clearly the mice had got on top of that. And I I am just amazed by how, how nice this pine tree seat is. <laughs> just like something you know 80% nice and then you go and do this and it's just so wrong <laughs> how about that <laughs> Minnesota pine needle seat installed <laughs> this is the most ridiculous thing all right I am going to O'Reilly's tomorrow to buy a seat cover for this thing I don't care what it costs this is just ruining it in here. <laughs> All right, well, whatever, I guess. Bolt her down. <laughs>
finally got first gear. I was getting worried there for a second. It's working good. I just, I can't feel if lockup or overdrive is working. It's sat and it's already that grimy. Let's see if she spins the tires. Let's go put this in the truck. So I got this fan in position. I almost want to. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's definitely not starting in second gear like it was before. It's smoking like crazy. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed us sort of finishing this build. It's been three years since we started this thing, so it has just been incredible to actually drive it for the first time down the road, as you saw. There's still so much to do with this thing, like finishing some interior stuff, the shifter kind of wiggles, you know, fine-tuning stuff. We still have to put all the wires in womb. We got to build a speaker box for the inside of the cab or something for some front speakers because the radio sounds bad. But the main thing is, is we got it driving now, running decent. Besides now, it's like 20 below here in Iowa, so it doesn't want to start. <laughs> it's supposed to start warming up again, so we'll get back on this immediately. And with that being said, and for all this snow you saw, we got another video coming out on another square body. That I bought as a plow truck that turns out to be a biggest pile ever. The motor runs good. It doesn't run good. We break axles. The exhaust falls off. It's just an absolute shit though. But see you guys next week.